Everything、mm-hmm. is medicine, and I think that our triggers are our personal prescription to our healing. Hello, my loves. Welcome back to the Lavender Lifestyle. I am so excited to have you today. We have a very special podcast. We're actually doing this in person. It's a whole setup, a whole production today with the very beautiful and amazing Lior Alexandra. So, Lior Alexandra is a spiritual and personal development guide, empowering individuals to access the divine within. An intuitive and healer, Lior is a sound healer, breathwork practitioner, and hypnotherapist, bringing people back to their innate. Self-healing abilities. With over 500,000 subscribers on YouTube, she also hosts a podcast called Inner Worlds and creates high vibrational jewelry with her brand Alchemy. So I'm so excited to be speaking all about self-healing today with Miss Lior Alexandra.、Yes. Hi. And thank you for the intro that I asked you to write for me. <laughs> I did with all the keywords. I did. I'm gonna invoice you for that. No, you don't need to. It's my pleasure. <laughs> Venmo you. <laughs> no, it's fine. It's I'm、perfect. so happy to do this with you. We've actually done a podcast before, but、mm-hmm. that was just online.、Yeah. So this is our first time meeting in person、mm-hmm. after watching each other's videos for, for years. For years. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I feel like I discovered your YouTube the first year you started it. And I,、yeah. I, I can't. I'll never forget when you gave me a. Shout out on your channel!、Oh. Like my dad was so excited. Really, like, this big YouTuber like knows who you are, and I'm like、wow. this small creator.、Oh、it was really、gosh. cool. I'll never forget it. I'm still grateful for it. Oh my、honestly. gosh, you are so sweet. She is so sweet and humble. I think Lior is like the best. I am such a fan. So, so am I. You know. Now、this. that that's out、mm-hmm. of the way, let let's start with sharing with our listeners a little bit about yourself and what inspired you to be a spiritual. And personal、mm-hmm. development guide. Yeah. Okay. So,、um, I guess I'm gonna consider that maybe nobody has heard the first one and just go just introduce myself、mm-hmm. a, anew, right?、Yeah. So, I've been spiritual my entire life.、Um, my mom converted to Buddhism when she was in her 20s, and she, that had a lot of impact on the way that she raised me. So, I'm Jewish by、um, by culture by. Ancestry, but also by choice. But I also have that really deep, ingrained Eastern philosophy in me, and I went on to study it in college. And so I've always been this very spiritual person. Now, leading other people came very synchronistically. I think that the biggest things that have ever happened to me in my life. I've always been guided. It's not something that's been intentional. It's always felt. I really haven't had that much foresight when it came to my to、wow. this journey at all. When I was younger, I wanted to be an entertainment news anchor.、Oh. Completely different. You know what? I, I kind of wanted to be that too.、No、I was、way. going towards that route, like、Me、media、too. and studying like journalism. That's yeah, exactly what I was、journalism. doing. I think we, I think we both、that. went to USC. Yes, and yeah, that's crazy.、Yeah. When did you graduate? Um, two thousand twelve. Two thousand. Yeah. I'm 2016. Yeah, and I, you know, that's the school you want to go、yeah. to if you want to do that.、Mm-hmm. But every so, in that sense, I had everything planned out. But when I woke up one day and I was like, "This isn't what I want to do." I was working at Daily Mail、mm-hmm. at the time, and I was in interviews to work for E News, and I just was like, "This isn't it." This isn't for、yeah. me, and I did. I got a really big rejection back then, and that rejection, I thank God for it every single day. I don't talk about it that often. Um, because it's what made me be like, okay, I'm going full time on YouTube. I'm、mm-hmm. going to teach people what I know,、mm-hmm. and I think that life does that a lot for us. We get this guidance in the form of rejection, right? And、um, and I don't think people see that often enough. Like when we're rejected, it feels so hurtful to the ego,、mm-hmm. but it's literally a redirection from the divine. Yes, I believe that too. <laughs> and、um, so everything I've done. In regards to this journey, has been completely guided like this big divine hand subtly nudging me to the left, to the right. right. Here's this. Here's this resource. Yeah, like my company, Alchemy.、Mm-hmm. It, it literally came out of. I had. I never wanted to do jewelry. My father's a jeweler.、Uh, I never wanted to do that.、Mm-hmm. It all just fell together perfectly, and now I love it. Of course. Wow.、Right? Yeah. Um. Yeah. So it's just like this divine guidance that led me there, and. When you find your calling and your purpose, it just works, and things just 
feel right and you feel expansive and you wake up wanting to do what you do every day. Right. I mean, all of these topics that you talk about, spirituality, mm-hmm. you you also go very deep into it. I'm mm-hmm. curious, were you always into these topics or was there like a shift in your life where you just discovered this and you went all right. in? It's a good question. So I think that I've always been into it, but also we were talking about this earlier. I have a Scorpio moon. Mm-hmm. It makes me need depth in everything. I so I go as deep as I can. Let's get to the absolute bottom, the root of this. Let me learn every bit of this, mm. right? But um, there was definitely shifts. There's been shifts in every few years in my life. And I think that a lot of people can relate to this where suddenly it's like you learn something new and it opens your mind. It's as if you were living like this with yeah. blinders on and suddenly it creaks open and open and open. Mm. And that's consciousness expansion, yeah. right? Yeah. And all these other things that have always existed, suddenly it's a part of your entire, your reality. Mm -hmm. So yeah, my life's always been that. It's like I discover new things and everything shifts and I look (laughs) at life completely differently. So when you (laughs) learn something new, do you just go all into it? Like you like to go deep? Yes, I see. I like to really, really go deep. But I also am that kind of person that's like, I want to know everything, (laughs) a little bit of everything. You've seen what I do. Like, let me learn a little yoga and let me learn how to hypnotize people and uh, guide meditation and do breath work and do all these different things little by little has yeah. led to my but what I like about that is I found um Aldous Huxley is one of my favorite authors and he wrote the perennial th- philosophy which is kind of this um this truth that exists that connects all religions and all mm. philosophies like there's an underlying truth there and that's what I've seen in my work and in my journey everything I've discovered is related somehow. Mm-hmm. Like my Judaism connects to Buddhism yeah. and um, you know Zen Buddhism and Taoism and Kabbalah, uh, Kabbalah and Gnos- Gnosis, Gnosis? Gnosticism. Mm-hmm. That's the word I'm looking okay. for. There's always an underlying, even Islam, there's an underlying truth there. Mm-hmm. And all these practices that I teach and that I use with people, there's this thing that connects them all. And that's that self-healing aspect. Right. I love that. That's what inspires me about you is like, you are not afraid to learn something new, go deep, get certified. (laughs) I'm like, how does she have time to get certified as all of these different things? Right. Well, my, my friends take it on the back burner. My family's on the back. (laughs) They wait a little bit for a couple of months. I I come back. (laughs) So let's talk about self-healing because I feel like you've been very into this for Mm. a few years. So what is Mm self-healing in in your eyes? How does it work? I have so much to talk about when it comes to self-healing because my journey with it goes so deep and it's just years in the making. So my mom um, is, as I was telling you, she's disabled and the medical industry has really failed her time and time again. Mm -hmm. It's really failed her. So I've always had this need and this yearning to not go with allopathic medicine, to not just trust doctors, because I've seen my mom be just, you know, disappointed time and time again, surgery after surgery, pill after pill, trial of medicine after trial of medicine, and nothing helps. So I have this yearning, and my brothers do as well, to just stay away from allopathic medicine. There's a time and place for it, for sure. Obviously, you need surgery. Yeah. You have to go to the doctor. You need a, you have a broken bone. You have to get a cast, right? There are certain things that, yes, Western medicine is amazing and we need it. And doctors, there are some really good doctors out there. However, I do believe that the pharmaceutical industry is too inextricably tied now to medicine and they have put profits over people. Mm-hmm. And that just really directed my life and my need to like, I have to take my healing into my own hands. I've suffered with depression, with anxiety, uh, mood disorders, PMDD, which is um, premenstrual dysphoric disorder. All these things that I was put on pills for and they didn't, they were never healed. So I had to take things into my own hands. Another thing that happened to me that really led me towards more self-healing, this was very, um, formative for me. When I was 13, I got Bell's palsy. So half of my face froze and uh, was paralyzed. And I was rushed to emergency and they put me on steroids. And for six months, nothing nothing changed. My face mm. was frozen. Wow. The steroids didn't do anything to help me. Kids were really mean in middle school. <laughs> Lots of mm. name calling and mm. it was a hard time for yeah. sure. 
Um, my face started moving again slowly after six months or after a year or so, but it never went back to normal. Long time, yeah, yeah. Especially as a young, mm-hmm. as a you know, you're becoming a teenager. Hormones, everything's changing, and it was hard, but. I think that the worst part of it was just like I was put on these really crazy meds and it didn't help me. Mm -hmm. And then when I was 26, 13 years later, I got Bell's palsy again. I was already on YouTube. I I think I saw. I saw it come back. Yeah, it came back and I did videos with my face frozen. Wow, yeah. So that that was a big deal for me because it's like, you know, you have this thing. People look at you as this way and um, sometimes having a physical appearance be a certain way gives you a lot of credibility credibility mm-hmm. and I saw that and I was like how can I put my face on camera ever again I'm actually going to do that because I'm afraid of this mm-hmm. so I did I recorded myself half frozen whatever I have a few videos on that and that's when my self-healing journey really deepened because wow. I went to acupuncture mm-hmm. and I worked with this amazing acupuncturist I still go to him I'm in love with him Dr. Jung you're the best <laughs> and um he healed me in two weeks. Wow. And that went hand in hand with deep meditation, visualization, visualizing the parts of my face getting unstuck, realizing, sorry, I hit the mic, realizing that um, that there is always an energetic cause for a physical stagnation, a dis-ease, something that's happening on the physical and emotional plane. Yes. There's always an energetic cause for it. So in that time of my life, I was feeling really stuck in my relationship. I was just feeling suffocated and like I couldn't get out. And that materialized mm-hmm. in my face. So you're saying it's the feeling of yes, stuck. Yes, of stuckness. That, exactly. Yes, yeah. So it's kind of like we have these emotions and these feelings and these thoughts. And we have all these different bodies. We don't just have the physical body. There's the auric and the etheric and the, the um, emotional body, the energetic body. And things get stuck. So emotions will get stuck in the emotional body. Energy gets stuck in the energy. If we don't move enough, if we don't do certain things to move yeah. around energy. And these things stagnate and they rot. They rot in our energetic field until they become more material. Mm. So they go um, level by level down in density. Yeah. And until they materialize in the physical plane in the form of cancer, mm-hmm. um, something as you know simple as having chronic migraines, chronic pain, all these things originate in an energetic yeah. level. I'm a firm believer in that too. Yeah. I've talked about this topic many times on yeah. my videos and podcasts too. Everything mm-hmm. starts with like the emotional level. Right. It, it starts with energy exactly. and then it becomes physical eventually. And everything is energy. Mm-hmm. And that is why energy healing works. Yeah. Because yeah. everything is energy. So imagine that we're all these vibratory energetic beings And when we get sick, when we get diseases, we try to fix them by throwing every physical thing we can at them, right? Mm -hmm. What's it called? Like the kitchen cabinet, kitchen sink at them? You throw whatever you can at this that's physical. But everything is energy. Why aren't we using energy medicine to Mm -hmm. move around energy so that it can physicalize, crystallize into healing on this third dimensional plane. Yeah. So explain, I want to hear your favorite methods of healing because there's so many different ways to heal out Mm -hmm. there. So what are the ways that you have really dove into that you practice? So um, like I said, it started with acupuncture, but since then it's been plant medicine, Mm -hmm. which is insanely powerful, but not for everybody. I'll say that now (laughs) after seven ayahuasca sits and that's a lot. Yeah. (laughs) Not for everybody. Yes. Um, It might never be for me again, Mm -hmm. uh, but it was amazing Mm -hmm. and really transformative. Breath work is incredible. Yes. Um, Obviously hypnotherapy. It's just like, it's, (sighs) It's something that is so innate to us to do. We heal each other with our words um, and it's just not used. And it's so powerful. And why hypnotherapy is so powerful is because you don't even need to know what's wrong. You just go there. I'm going to set you up later for the sound bath, exactly how you should be set up for hypnotherapy. And it's the same as with sound too. And you lay there and your mind undoes the knots 
that's holding on to all that energy. And you don't have to remember trauma. You don't have to remember when it happened. It's just on your behalf healing your body. Mm -hmm. So hypnotherapy is so powerful. Um, and sound. Sound is incredibly powerful. I've been using it more and more in my ceremonies and in working with people, incorporating it in because in spirituality, we're always using these words like resonance and raising your vibration and frequency, right? Mm -hmm. These are all sound terms. Yeah. It all comes from sound. Sound is energy and sound can move vibration. It, it shifts our frequency. Yes. So I think it's the missing ingredient in a lot of energy healing. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for sharing all those different ways. Cause yeah. I, I know we can go in depth into mm -hmm. each mm -hmm. method. We've had Tell a podcast. Me, I think, I believe we talked about breath work and hypnotherapy yeah. before, mm -hmm. but today I really wanted to focus on sound because mm -hmm. one, I want to give a demonstration to our listeners Two, I feel like it's an easy way for people to like, a lot of people can access it online. So you just, accessible. you just yes. listen. Yes. That's it. Totally. And it's like, you know, sound is like, you know, through the internet, it still works the same as if you are totally. in person for yeah. the most part. Do you believe that? Do you oh, believe? I completely do. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I you think can that's put amazing. On, there's um, one thing that I want to recommend to everybody that I've learned about recently. Mm -hmm. 40 hertz, the tone of 40 hertz yeah. is so powerfully healing. There's research that backs it up mm -hmm. that listening to 40 hertz for seven hours a day can heal and reverse Alzheimer's. Wow. Alzheimer's. I've Alzheimer's. heard of these like energy, these frequencies yeah. and the power of it, but can you try to explain yes. to our listeners how that totally. works? How is sound and different frequencies used for different healing? Okay, yeah, of course. I was really interested in how, how am I going to lay down and hear these crystal bowls and it's going to do something in me. Yeah. So like we were saying, everything is um, energy. Mm -hmm. Everything is vibrating. Even this table that seems like it's not moving, it's moving right now. Yeah. So everything resonates at a certain frequency. All the organs in the human body have their own frequency. Okay. Uh. And then all together, a human body has this composite frequency. And so through the process of entrainment, so entrainment is when one vibratory body affects another. So try to imagine there's a really good, um, example in this book, there was um, a, a, a study done where they put all these clocks, you know, those old clocks that like take like this yeah. and the, yeah. I, I don't know how, what you call that thing that swings, the pendulum like yes, swings pendulum. back and forth. Mm -hmm. So they were all swinging at different times. Mm -hmm. They put them all in a room together and left. They came back a few hours later. They were all swinging at the same mm. rate as the largest clock there. Ah, so see. that's the process of entrainment. Yeah. So entrainment is when our frequency matches another mm. objects. Just so, because you hear it or you're part exactly. of Exactly. Well, yeah, because exactly. Because what happens is it's this feedback loop. So you have um, um your heart rate is he, is beating at a certain frequency. Mm -hmm. That affects your breathing and that affects your brainwave states. Mm -hmm. So it's a loop that affects each other, yeah. right? So we're vibrating. Everything's vibrating. So these sound bowls, when they vibrate, you can entrain to them. Does mm -hmm. that make that sense? That makes sense. I, if yeah. you think about music, if yes. you play a, like a nice beat, you can't help but like exactly. follow the beat. Yes. Naturally, we're already following the right. music. Mm -hmm. And I also think of like when women, if when they live together, their cycles match up. I literally wrote that down as an example. <laughs> That's exactly it. Because even though it's not Tripping. sound, your menstrual cycle is not sound, but yes. I don't know, you can explain this better probably, no, right. but something about you it is... Sync up to, vibration. You yeah. sync up to somebody else's cycle. Okay, that, that makes so much very, sense. Very, very normal. Okay. Um, and uh, so entrainment also, have you ever heard of heart hugs? No. So it's but, when you okay. hug your heart to another person's mm, heart. So mm -hmm. to the left, right? So you hug. Okay. Yes. Left. So heart to heart. Heart, heart yes. to heart. Yes, <laughs> exactly. So heart to heart can entrain people to each other. Uh, There's something really interesting that I um, heard the other day. Um, the time when couples fight most often mm -hmm. is when one of them comes home 
and the other has been home for a while. So let's say that there's like somebody <laughs> That's like who me works, and my boyfriend all day. Right, all the time. <laughs> yes. So that time when you guys are um, seeing each other after a long time. you're not time, synced. You're not synced. Oh, exactly. that makes sense. Right? So yeah. there's this thing that people say, they say to do heart hugs mm. where you hold each other, you come in through the door and whoever has been there already is, yeah. is a, at a slower pace, yes. right? The other one is like things are running through their mind, whatever. Mm-hmm. They've just been out in the world, so stimulated. Yeah. So we have to get into the same we have to entrain that, to one that another. That makes so much sense right? to me. Wow. Um, so yeah, so it works in that sense. Okay. And like I was saying, every organ in the body has its own frequency. Mm-hmm. And then the sound bowls have this slower rate, this vibratory rate. Mm-hmm. And any music, right? Not just sound bowls. Literally any music, hertz, whatever, uh, 40 mm-hmm. hertz. And you listen to it and it slows down your breathing first, Mm, right? And then your breathing will start to slow your heart rate down. And then both of those things start to slow your brain waves. Mm. And then what happens is you shift from a beta frequency, which is what we're in right now, Mm -hmm. into um, a relaxed alpha state or a theta state. And when you're in those frequencies, you start to get into the autonomic nervous system. Mm -hmm. And then that's that um, nervous system, we have two parts in there. We have the sympathetic nervous system and then we have the parasympathetic nervous system. Mm -hmm. We've talked about this before too. Um, And um, with the parasympathetic nervous system, when everything is slowed down, it starts to activate. And it has that. That's when you start healing basically. Exactly. So really it's, so sympathetic is the flight or fight or flight mm-hmm. state. It's mm-hmm. when you're stressed. Parasympathetic is the state you're in when you're relaxed. And when you're relaxed and calm, that's when your body can heal. Mm-hmm. And I think that's the crucial thing that people need to understand. It's very simple, really. So easy. It's so simple, but people, they they don't let themselves heal because they're always stressed. They're always yes. on the go yes. and tense. Mm-hmm. So that's exactly okay. it. And, that makes so much and sense. people are, also don't seem to relate stress to all the diseases that we exactly deal with. It is the basis. It causes inflammation. And inflammation yeah. has been shown to be like the reason yes, why we're the sick. The foundation of, of all yes. sickness, of all yes. imbalances in the body. I see. So with yep. the sound bath, mm-hmm. it essentially just helps calm you down so that you can activate exactly. that healing yes. side. And it's that entrainment, right? Entrainment. Just, you're um, um, aligning your frequency to another vibratory body and it's just mm-hmm. slowing everything down. I see. Yeah. Do you, since there are different sizes and different uh-huh. tones, like is, is that just for fun <laughs> or like, is there a reason for that? So different, um, this is the thing that's <laughs> interesting about crystal bowls because my crystal bowls are all tuned to the same frequency, Okay. but they're supposed to be tuned to different frequencies. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> what do you mean? Well, each so you're one, saying they all play the same note? So no, they don't play oh. the same note, oh. but they're all at 432 hertz, Okay. which I'm not a sound person. I'm not a music <laughs> person, but what I'm understanding is that it kind of hits the body in almost the same way, but the the size of these bowls is supposed to carry a note for a different chakra point. Oh, oh, that's interesting. Which I think is beautiful. Do I know if it actually works in that okay, sense? There, yeah, there there's seven. seven. Mm-hmm. Wow. Okay. Exactly. So the root one is the biggest one, and then it goes all the way up to the. Crown. Okay, that makes sense. Does. Yeah. I mean, with chakras, do you believe that they go from like lower to higher, higher vibration as you go up? Right. Um, yeah, I do. You know what I've been trying to do this year in, <laughs> in the past couple of years actually is I'm trying not to regurgitate any information that I haven't experienced mm-hmm. myself, that I haven't seen myself. And you yeah, know, I've seen some weird yeah. <laughs> things in my life. Yeah. Um, so I do feel I mean, chakras are real. They yeah, exist. Yeah. We have more than seven. That. There's more. There's mm-hmm. other ones in our other other mm-hmm. bodies. Um, but uh, I think that's some of the techniques that people use to like activate certain ones maybe don't really correlate. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> but, you know, like wearing a certain color and things like that. Yeah, yeah. I do think that eating certain colors definitely activates different chakras. Yeah. And they do move into in different frequencies. What's interesting to me about chakras is how it's... Um, how we can use it to kind of manifest and bring mm-hmm. things through mm-hmm. and how we can go up the chakra system mm-hmm. to connect to the divine, mm-hmm. right? That's what I really like about the chakra system. Yeah. yeah. So um, um, manifestation and enlightenment are two opposing um, 
concepts. Manifestation, you bring things from the energetic bodies, from other, for the thought form world, like we are talking about, these mm -hmm. other planes of existence, and you bring them down through the chakras and through the root and into physicality. Yeah. Right? So it's another way that um, energy healing works. It moves through the chakras from these other realms I into see. the crown through the body. I see. Right? Yeah. And the manifestation is a little bit different. It moves. Um, oh, it's the same. It moves thought forms through and bursts into the world. Mm -hmm. And then enlightenment is the opposite. We're transcending the physicality, moving up. Into the spiritual. Into the, crown, into the spiritual. I see. Yeah. I see. <laughs> and in terms of sound healing, are there any sounds that are not good for you? Or oh, that's interesting. Like, yeah. Do you, do you know anything about that? So there's a nefarious way of using sound right um, so like the united states government uses music torture um wow. prisoners of war they'll put them they'll make them listen to like heavy metal <gasps> and, and noises like that yeah. um to torture them mm -hmm. and i think that's horrific mm -hmm. but it really works it breaks the will of prisoners wow. and they like because uh, it's like taking away your peace yeah it's like chaos exactly. it's also nonstop. think about these cultures they're mm -hmm. coming from a place that they don't know mm -hmm. heavy metal and they're being mm -hmm. subjected to it they think it's like the devil you oh, know I it's see. terrifying to them yeah so music can be used in a negative way for sure music yeah. has also been used to on a very like conspiracy theory note, <laughs> yeah. has been used to program masses into yeah. lower frequency. Yes. There's also um, something really interesting that I've recently learned of. So I use drums and rattles a lot in mm -hmm. my ceremonies when we do breath work. And the sound of a rattle and the sound of drums is very different than when you're listening to a calming sound bath mm -hmm. or classical music, something that really calms you down. So how do drums and rattles work in um, self-healing, right? I always wondered about that. Like I thought maybe it's the rhythmic drumming getting you deeper into a trance. But what I learned recently is that what it does is it actually disrupts thought forms. Okay. So let's say we're trying to work through some disease or some sort of negative belief or something. When you start to rattle or drum, it's using like a negative or a music that doesn't sound as beautiful to disrupt a thought form. I see. So it can be used um, yeah. to feed us, to nourish us, uh -huh. and also to create chaos and to destroy oh, illusions. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh, because when you're like listening to a drum beat, it's mm -hmm. your mind goes to that. You right, can't right. focus on, on your anything thoughts. else. I right, see. exactly. And it just kind of breaks apart those thoughts. Uh huh. It's really interesting. Okay. I see. Yeah, I think there's so much power and there's something special about sound mm -hmm. and music absolutely yeah i think that our souls can't resist i think um teal swan said this mm -hmm. one time and it stuck with me our souls can't resist music yeah it's and universal really, it's totally mm -hmm. universal right there's the whole concept of um mm -hmm. being the one universal sound which all other sounds are encompassed within um mm -hmm. right and when we chant that it's the universal noise mm -hmm. uh and there's also channelers who say like sound exists in the seventh dimension. Like the seventh dimension is sound. Yeah. Um, it, I have seen recently, I think that I've talked to you about this before, how I work with different energies like Venus and things like that, mm -hmm. right? Like spheres of consciousness. I've recently noticed that sound in itself is a sphere of consciousness and sound picks certain people to work with them. Mm. So a lot of people who are beautiful singers, yeah. they're, they're healers. Yeah, and, yeah, exactly. Musicians, anything like that. Yeah. It's like if you're called, now I'm not musically talented. <laughs> I wish I was. My yeah. brother is like so gifted mm -hmm. he can pick up any instrument and he knows how to play it but I've had this interest in music and instruments yeah. musical instruments my entire life I always just get random ones I have this piano here you can see <laughs> yeah, I don't know how to play it it's okay <laughs> <laughs> but it's like you feel called to it so I think that yeah. people who feel called to music in whatever way even if we're not so good for it good with it mm -hmm. we're being called to be yeah. sound healers another mm -hmm. thing that comes to my mind is like I think the the act of like singing or like mm -hmm. making sounds with your voice is very healing as well. Yes. I think not enough people realize that and do that. I mean, I'm a singer, so I know the release I get yeah. from singing, but I think a lot of people who never sing or who never use their voice in that way don't realize how healing it is. Mm -hmm. Like if you go to a concert, everyone's singing at the top of their lungs. That's very healing. They're to do that together. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. And it's not only therapeutic, it's also like a, a method of manifestation too. Mm. When people are, when monks are, are, 
chanting yeah, mantras yeah that's using the voice with intention to yes. bring something in yes. i feel like you're in my mind because everything that you're bringing up is like exactly what i wanted to talk about <laughs> i swear I mean. I see. so um uh our voice mm-hmm. yeah, that's another thing let's talk about that oh, the power so of good. your voice the power of, so my favorite from the bible in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. Mm -hmm. That is how all of creation came into being. It's through the voice. It's through word. Mm -hmm. So the way that I really got into hypnotherapy, um, I don't know if we talked about this before. I read the book Island by Aldous Huxley in 2019. Mm -hmm. So, you know, he wrote Brave New World, uh, which was his dystopian novel. So Island was his last book that he wrote before he died. Mm. And it's about this um, utopian society on this island called Paula. And they, um, you know, their kids go through an initiation process, which is they take these like uh, psychedelic medicine and they have uh, a ritual. And their hospitals, when somebody gets sick in Paula, they go to the hospital and somebody speaks them into wealth, in, into well-being, well maybe mm-hmm. wealth too, <laughs> into well-being. And I remember reading that book and I'm like, this is real. They're, this exists. Mm. What they're doing in this book must exist. And then I went on to discover hypnotherapy. Mm. Aldous Huxley was, and his wife, Laura Huxley, I think, were very, very into hypnotherapy. I, I see. later found out. Yeah. So hypnotherapy is all about, and in the, the healing technique in this book, it's all about using the word mm-hmm. to heal. So humans have this innate ability to heal themselves and each other. So you say how healing it is for you to sing, but your singing also heals everybody around mm, you. And I that's see. like such a beautiful, and it doesn't have to be singing too. It can be words. Yeah. There's something that I think that's really interesting about how I make my videos. And I get comments where people are like, I feel so much better after watching this video. Mm-hmm. It has nothing to do with what I said. Yeah. It's the transmission that's just comes. listening to your voice. Exactly. Through oh, the words. That's beautiful. Um, there is uh, someone was saying, there was like a channeler that said that humanity, that the way that we used to talk, used to be very different. Mm. It used to be more tonal, more harmonious. Mm. So it's almost like we sing our, our conversations. I see. And that was probably a society that had no bad health, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Um, uh, people healing each other through their conversations all the time. Mm-hmm. Our words can bring each other up and they can yeah. know, bring us down. Yeah. Yeah. If you think about it, 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 it's not the words themselves that are doing the teaching or the healing. Because imagine there was, you had a video, but it wasn't you speaking it. It was that robot Siri right. voice speaking right. the same type of content. Nobody would want to watch that. Such a good call. <laughs> exactly. And like maybe the information would be interesting, but you wouldn't feel yeah. anything. You yeah. wouldn't leave there like, oh, I feel different. Exactly. Yeah. So oh. our words completely, they create, they create work. Mm-hmm. I'm really of the belief that what we say uh, creates reality. Mm -hmm. And I I think quantum physics really backs it up. Like consciousness is constantly creating what we're experiencing Mm -hmm. here. Yeah. Um, So yeah, our words are very important in healing. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, do you have any tips for people? Because I know we're talking about the theory and the concepts, but what practical ways can people start to apply this knowledge in their life? I think that, like you were saying before, music is just, it's so easy. Mm -hmm. This is the thing about self-healing. I think that people think going to the doctor is easier. I'm telling you that it's harder to make an appointment with your doctor. Do you... I've had my mom make my doctor's appointments my entire life. I'm terrible at making I don't know how to do it still (laughs) at this point. I'm almost 30. (laughs) But it is easier to do a little self-healing session for yourself than to make an appointment. For real. I'm Mm -hmm. not even kidding. You just have to kind of learn um, to set yourself up in a very comfortable position. And then you throw on a hypnotherapy or you throw on a sound bath meditation on YouTube. It's Mm -hmm. as simple as that. Yeah. When it comes to where to start um, in other aspects other than, you know, and this is the thing. People don't set aside time for it. Yeah. I really encourage setting aside time, like make time to be in sound, Mm -hmm. put your, create an experience around it. Set yourself up, lay down, um, elevate your legs. Our legs being elevated ab- above our hearts slows the body down. And then 
Cover your eyes with some sort of pillow and just let yourself be for 30 minutes mm -hmm. daily. Mm, Find daily. a way to do this daily. Yeah. yeah. Um, I was talking to another healer recently. I don't remember what she… I had a question for her. Like, why do we need to do… Oh, right. She was an osteopathic doctor. And I said, why do we need to do all this self-healing every single day? And she said, because of the way that society runs now, right? We're not walking barefoot on clean soil that mm -hmm. heals us every day. I see. We're not in the sun every day. Yeah. So we have to take aside intentional time mm -hmm. every day to do that energetic hygiene and that mm -hmm. cleansing. Yeah. And then it also comes to words, right? What stories are we telling about ourselves? What magic are we, what spells are we casting over our life? Mm -hmm. So my mom often, and she's changed, she's, she's gotten so much better, but you know, she's in chronic pain. So every day I would hear her like, oh, I'm in so much pain. This hurts, that hurts. You know, I'm, she used to call, so she's not sick. She's, she has chronic pain. Yeah. She has issues, but she's not sick, mm -hmm. right? Um, she used to say that she's sick. She used to tell oh, people she's sick. Mm -hmm. And she often would suddenly get really ill. Mm -hmm. So I would I worked with her on that statement about her, what she was saying, yeah. what spell she was casting. She doesn't say it anymore. She tells people like, you know, I'm disabled, whatever. Um, but she won't say that she's sick anymore. And she never gets sick. That oh, woman is so like healthy yeah. in that aspect mm -hmm. her body doesn't do what she wants it to do but she's very healthy yeah, yeah. And it's just what stories are we telling about ourselves what are we telling people about our yes. health and about your words are spells yeah they can create yeah. the reality exactly I, yes yeah wow and i've seen um people there louise hay she's mm -hmm. um you can heal yourself yeah. you can heal your life yeah the affirmations um one of the things that is so interesting to me she points out that people who have a lot of allergies tend to think that the world is a very unfriendly place. Oh, I see. So it's like you become allergic to the world, like you're not of it anymore, mm -hmm. you know? And um, the second that they change their belief systems on a deep way to think that the world is more friendly, the allergies subside. Mm -hmm. So it's like, what words are you saying? What thoughts yeah. are you holding? What emotions are you having? Yeah. It also ties into um, getting into that deeper brainwave state because when you are relaxed in meditation or sound bath or hypnotherapy, mm -hmm. that's where you can really change those deep beliefs. Because exactly. it's, it's tough to do it yeah. on the everyday surface level. Almost impossible, yeah, actually. Yeah. yeah. And what I was saying that there's like a perennial philosophy to all these healings, it's all that it takes you into the subconscious mind. Mm. These are all portals to the subconscious mind. I see. I see. So whenever, when you're in meditation, when you're in a flow state, because you're doing something that's just getting you in the present moment, mm -hmm. when you are in hypnosis, when you are in a sound bath meditation, you are in this theta state, which gives you access to the subconscious mind. Mm -hmm. So yes, we can repeat affirmations all day long and it will positively improve our lives for sure. Mm -hmm. But to really get deep, like you were saying, yeah. it's accessing the subconscious mind. Yes. Okay. And in case, I think we forgot to mention it yeah. earlier, but we will be doing a sound bath yeah. with Lior. She's going to do it live. It's going to be a whole meditation. So I'll post that as another podcast as well as the video. So you can either watch the video, listen to the podcast. And do you recommend they go in with a certain intention? Like, mm -hmm. what do you recommend to prep yeah. for this? Well, I think that everything should have an intent. Oh, there's several things to prep yeah. for. <laughs> I got you. Yes. <laughs> and, and this also works for any healing modality, mm -hmm. not just sound bath. It works for anything. For mm -hmm. If you're going to set yourself up and listen to a hypnotherapy session, you should be doing this. So first of all, intention is everything. Um, imagine that you are, um, Aaron Dowdy used to say this. I don't know if he still does. So there's like an ocean and you are a sailboat and you're just drifting through the ocean, you need to go a certain direction. So your intention is that sail, mm -hmm. right? The sail for the sailboat. So set an intention for your healing. Like I am intending to heal this aspect. Mm -hmm. And if you don't know what it is, it's just, I'm intending to heal. Right. Yeah, yeah. I, and it's powerful. I don't know if I'm allowed to talk about plant medicine because I have fine. several times yeah. to ask you. But, um, for example, when, when you show up to, um, a plant medicine ceremony, if you're, if it's psilocybin or ayahuasca, if you go in without an intention, you're going to be literally taken from place to place <laughs> and all over the, like, yeah. it's going to be chaos. Mm. Um, also 
if you show up with an intention to heal, it could be chaos too, because mm-hmm. that's what's going to take you to your healing, yeah. right? So putting an attention to any of these sort of modalities is going to make them more effective. Mm-hmm. Um, on a physical level, to get the most out of anything that accesses the subconscious mind, you want to stay away from any stimulants that day. Um at least four hours before, no caffeine. But, you know, I've done it right. with caffeine also, and it still works. It's just better. It's like if you mm-hmm. want to really get the most out of it. Right. So no stimulants, no caffeine. Um, oh, hmm. I think that's about it. Yeah. The one thing that I say is just a little bit an esoteric tip, that if you have been drinking alcohol within the last 12 hours— don't do these kinds of things. <laughs> What's the reason? It lowers your frequency. Oh, it I makes see. you susceptible to lower energies, mm-hmm. lower entities, mm-hmm. which is, I know, a very esoteric yeah. thing. But yeah, yeah. I just I recommend see. not doing something like that. Yeah. Yeah. That's about it. Even meditation, awesome. honestly, and sometimes. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you for that. Of I course. hope everyone listens to it <laughs> <Yeah>. and <laughs> finds some sort of healing or relaxation through it. I'm very excited about that. Um, before we get to the sound bath, though, yeah. I have some questions from Instagram that I want to ask you yes. from our audience. Um, so Ria's question, what's the most difficult thing you've had to heal? Mm. This is a juicy one. Oh, Okay, well, I think it's something that people, so I've healed through, I've gone through pretty intense um, assault in my life (sighs) that I had to heal through, which um, ended up in a deep distrust of men. Mm -hmm. But that wasn't even the most difficult, I wouldn't say. Bell's palsy was, I had a lot of help with that. I think that the thing that's the most difficult for me to heal that I'm still working on healing every day is... um, feelings of unworthiness oh yes yeah me too <laughs> I think that we <laughs> a all lot of us have we it, all right? yes we all have it on some level and you could be a, a very successful person and people could think that you have everything going on for mm-hmm. you and those feelings are still very deep there mm-hmm. and some of us just have that's our our journey that's our challenge like can you live your life can you be a beacon of light but also have to deal with this demon that you have to kind of integrate every day mm-hmm. and just bring yourself up every single day. So it's not healed yet, yeah. but it's a, it's a daily practice of yeah. just bringing myself. And sometimes it gets really bad in certain situations, um, so certain social situations, for example, or, you know, um, comparing yourself to other people that, that those feelings of unworthiness can get really big then. Mm-hmm. And it's just having awareness awareness like oh this is my thing this is my little demon that I have to work with yeah. and just send love to that aspect of myself yeah that's huge huge just send love and huge mm-hmm. and it's like love can actually heal everything as cheesy as that sounds mm-hmm. you know um and affirmations help a lot with that but being intentional about affirming your worth right mm-hmm. so getting into those states of altered states of consciousness where you're more susceptible to affirmations and then just affirming your worth in that way. Yes, totally. Um, And then another question from Lisa is, how can I heal from a stressful and anxiety-inducing cycle? So I guess people who just have these patterns, like you're aware of it, but you know, how do you heal? Um, Aware of the cycle. So just going in and like you're getting to a good place and then again in a cycle of stress kind of thing. Is that what it means? Um, I mean, another similar question was how to heal from recurring patterns. So I guess if you know that you always find yourself stressed or find yourself having anxiety and it always, you know, comes back. back. Yeah. Well, I think that awareness is the first step, seeing when that comes back. Mm -hmm. If something is continuously coming back, it means it needs to be looked at. It needs to be (laughs) calling for you to learn that lesson. Exactly. And if it keeps coming back in different ways, it's like... uh, how many more ways is, uh, what's his name? Aubrey, yeah, Aubrey Marcus. Mm -hmm. He said something like, your body's going to whisper before it screams. You've seen that quote. It's Mm -hmm. it's really good. And it's like, life is going to keep showing you that same cycle over and over again until you finally deal with it. Mm -hmm. So what triggers that cycle to start again? Um, And having a plan. Like, Mm -hmm. I know that when I get to this dark point, I'm going to, first of all, let myself be. People go through downs. It's 
the human experience. It's mm-hmm. literally why we're here to feel the full range, right? Yeah. Um, and I'm going to have a plan. When I get super stressed, I'm going to take some CBD, set myself up for hypnotherapy, yeah. put on a yeah, sound Yeah, have bath. like a routine to exactly. de-escalate, de-stress. Exactly, have a plan. Yeah. Um, what's really interesting to me about our way, our society, the way that our society is set up is we have so much more free time, mm-hmm. yet no one takes any time to relax. It's true. We're it's always so, on our phones, exactly. watching TV, and so that stimulated. Is not so stimulated mm-hmm. all the time. People yeah. think if I'm laying in bed scrolling my phone, I'm relaxing. Mm-hmm. You're not relaxing. <laughs> you're not. You're just adding more stimulation. Yeah. Exactly yeah. what you're saying. So making that intentional time to relax, if you can, on a daily basis. And mm-hmm. most of us have 30 minutes to relax every day. We just yeah. have to be intentional yeah. about just it. Just carving yeah. out the space to do it. Exactly. Yeah. Another thing that I wanted to bring up was like, when things trigger us, mm-hmm. you should look at it as, oh, what's this teaching me? Like, sh- what's this showing me about what I have exactly. within? Because I know people live their life trying to avoid their triggers. Yeah. They avoid, right? they, they try like to trigger avoid warning. it. Exactly. Right. But it's mm-hmm. actually, as hard as it is, yeah. it is helping you because it's showing you what needs to be healed. Totally. Everything is and our medicine. what I've learned, because there are things that trigger me too, you yeah. know, in my relationship or everyday mm-hmm. life. And before, Whereas before you would like run away from it and not like try to avoid it. Now it's like when something like that happens, it's, I feel it. I'm like, oh, I noticed that I have this feeling in my heart. Why? And and I, it's about like, I guess, allowing the feeling to happen and then just understanding why it happens. Exactly. Everything Mm -hmm. is medicine. And I think that our triggers are our personal prescription to our healing. Yes. There's a reason for that. There's a reason for everything. So that's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I guess there's one more question that I can ask from Madalena. What was life like before spiritual awakening? <laughs> um, I drank a lot. I oh. ate lots of chicken wings and pizza. Oh. Gained like 20 pounds. <laughs> and I was in abusive relationships. <laughs> wow. And then <gasps> what, when was that shift for you? How long ago was so that? So the major, well, I had my non-abiding awakening, which is the awakening that doesn't stay with you, mm-hmm. right? So I had that in my early 20s, which was mind-blowing, and I had no resources to understand what happened to me. So I just mm-hmm. went about my chicken-eating, <laughs> beer-drinking days. Uh-huh. Uh, but the shift really happened deeply probably in 2015, 2015. Mm -hmm. And that's when I started meditating and started doing yoga and I went vegan and just everything started then. And then it deepens every so often. It deepens and deepens and deepens. It's the deepest it's been now. But what it's, what's interesting to me is my life now is a lot more like my life was when I was like eight or nine years old. Oh, that's cute. I'm more like my child. Your true self. Totally. And my brothers say the same thing. They're like, we lost you for a few years there, but you're back. (laughs) That's really cute. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I mean, how would you describe spirituality to people out there who who maybe are are the previous Lior? Maybe yeah. they're living they're In the old sense. self and right. yeah, how do you describe um, this new version of you? So it's putting well-being, which is a different it's really well-being is not spirituality, but it does fall, it's a facet of, of it, course. right? Yeah. So it's putting the way your frequency feels, the way that you feel in your daily life, putting that above um, what society deems mm. to be like a good time, mm-hmm. you know, or fulfilling in that mm-hmm. sense. Um, it's living life intentionally, realizing that everything is connected, everything is meaningful, yeah. and that our actions matter. Everything matters, mm-hmm. right? So I thought that I could just live this way and then my relationship would be great. But how can your relationship be great when you're abusing yourself, not taking care of yourself? And in every aspect of your life, you're struggling. It's like spirituality comes in. It's like, it's all connected. It's all needs to have a synergetic, you know, flow between things. Mm -hmm. When you take care of yourself, you're going to attract better relationships. When you attract better relationships, you're going to take better care of yourself. It's just that kind of living in that sense. And realizing also that your life is meaningful that you're here for a reason, that we're not just random, uh, like that the Big Bang happened and we suddenly happened to be here, these intelligent organisms Mm -hmm. and all this beautiful creation. That's not a mistake. It's all meaningful. And that there is a divine loving 
energy that created all of it. And you can call it the universe, you can call it God, creator, divine intelligence, whatever, infinite intelligence, whatever you want to call it, but it's there. And it loves us so much. We are that energy. We're sparks of it. And yeah, everything's meaningful. Makes I love life that. more and more beautiful, right? Yeah, I love your energy and the way you see things so much. Um, do you feel like life is easier and things flow better when you're tapped into that? You totally, know, of course. The because, divine. Because exactly, because mm. you're not alone. Mm. You're still going to have challenges, still have problems, but you pray over it mm -hmm. and you know that something is going to help you and that everything's going to be all right in the end. And it really always is. And we have anxieties and we have depression and that comes, but you see everything as meaningful and everything as divinely ordained. And when you find humans are meaning assigning creatures, we want things to mean something. Mm -hmm. So when we can accept that everything does mean something, then it just, you know, life becomes more enjoyable. I enjoy the lows even. Yeah. Like I find my lows really freaking beautiful. <laughs> Actually, I think I was telling like, talk you more about, about that. Because I think a lot of people <laughs> struggle with that. Yeah. But I also, like you, believe that we need, we're here to experience everything, the highs and the lows. Mm -hmm. Right. Exactly. Duality. Yes. So all the full range of human mm -hmm. emotions, we come from a place where everything's perfect, but perfect gets boring, yes. right? We want to explore more of ourselves, more, uh, and physicality gives us that, that opportunity and physicality has chocolate and tacos, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> physicality yeah. has sunsets. So mm -hmm. it's like, we want to be here. We want to feel all of it. And I was telling you before we were recording that I'm going through my own personal tower moment where mm -hmm. everything is crumbling for me in a way. And I think that younger me would have been like, why me? Like, why is all this happening to me? And just like moping all the time. And mm -hmm. that's okay too. Sometimes we do that. Yeah. Right. But where I am, where I'm coming from now, it's like, I even in a weird way right now, talking about it, feel gratitude for everything I'm experiencing. Mm -hmm. It's so beautiful to get to experience these lows. Like wow. the last breakup I had, I was crying from joy because I'm like, oh my God, I have a heart. I feel my heart. Like it's like, yeah. it just shows you. Yeah. And I, that might seem so far out for somebody who's, who maybe this is their first time even considering things mm -hmm. like this, but it's just remembering that you're this spiritual being having a spiritual experience yeah. in a human body, exactly. but it's all spiritual, right? Yeah. Yeah. And that it's all happening for us. Mm -hmm. That makes it so exciting. Mm -hmm. Like friendships falling apart. I have like love life is nowhere to be seen <laughs> and it's perfect. It's beautiful. Yeah. Because from that nothingness, from that feeling, I, um, somebody posted this the other day. It was so beautiful. It's like as deep as you're, Depths can go, you can rise from that, mm -hmm. right? So I can feel these really low lows and I know what's coming is these high. beautiful highs. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I love that so much. I hope more people can learn to understand that and yeah. tap into that side of them. I I think also in spirituality, it's like not being not identifying with your emotions. Like if you're sad, you aren't. Like that's not your whole body. Yeah. Like you are just, you can observe Feeling sad. your emotions. You can right. feel it, but it's not everything that you are. Exactly. It doesn't identify exactly. you. It's not who you are. Yeah. 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 And emotions and thoughts, they're like clouds and they're there for a reason. And yeah. then they go, they float away. Like if you really think about it, our souls chose to live as a human yeah. body to experience all the whole range of emotions everything. of human yes. beings. And that like, it's the range that's beautiful. Yeah. Like it's like a roller coaster ride. You're going to go on it because it has ups and downs exactly. and it goes around. And that's if you like roller coasters, yeah. which, which I do. <laughs> but it's, I, I'd rather life be exciting than it and be just boring and the same and perfect every day. And have all that range of colors, exactly, right? Exactly. So I always see it as like we have this masterpiece that is our life. Mm -hmm. And if you have the same color over and over and over again, it's cute. I mean, I'll hang it up in my apartment. <laughs> but what's it exciting is the different colors, yeah, right? Yeah. All those different emotions. Like, oh my God, look at what I'm going to get to feel. Yeah. <laughs> I incarnated to feel these feelings. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you get it. <laughs> awesome. Well, is there anything else that you want? Want to leave our audience with today? Um, just that I really hope and wish that everybody 
gets from this that taking care of yourselves and setting aside those 30 minutes every yeah. day if you can. I know mm -hmm. some people, you know, we have children and pets and jobs mm -hmm. and two jobs, yeah. like yeah. all these different things. So I know that it can get hard, but finding a place to, a place in your week, in your month, in your life to just dedicate to yourself and know mm -hmm. that it's important to come from um, a full cup, yeah, you know, fill, fill up your own cup so mm -hmm. you can give to others better. Yes. That's about it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's not selfish. You deserve it. Exactly. Absolutely. At the very least, 30 minutes a day. At the very right? least. Yes. Yes. Agreed. Awesome. And lastly, where can we find you online? Um, just my name everywhere, Leo or Alexandra. Thank yes, you. Yes, her podcast, Inner World. <laughs> oh, Inner World, yes. Thank you so much for being thank here. Thank I had so much fun. Me. You're amazing. Your energy is incredible. Oh, thank like, you. I just felt you like too. I could tell you and talk to you about everything. I know. I feel like we can talk for hours. <laughs> me too. <laughs> on this. I swear, me too. Yeah. We will. You have to come on Inner World also okay. when I do a second season. Okay, I will. It's in the works one day. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for having awesome. me. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs>